What if I told you you could buy a brand new Mercedes S-Class for less than half price? This is the new Mini S-Class. Actually, just kidding. This is the new entry-level A-Class from Mercedes, but just because it's entry-level doesn't mean that it's not full of a lot of technology and features. First of all, if you have a look at it, it's a lot simpler looking. There's not a lot of creases now. It has very short overhangs. The wheels are pushed out. It has a real nice presence to it. In the front here, you have, of course, the TriStar. You have standard LED headlights. You have standard 17-inch wheels optional 18 inch or even special order you can get 19 inch wheels in the back standard led tail lights as well with the premium package you can get an automatic trunk as well now a lot of the appeal though on the a-class is actually on the inside so let's have a look the new a-class has really upped the ante in terms of technology and connectivity, which is why it's perfectly fitting to host the launch in Seattle, Washington, home to some of the largest companies involving tech like Microsoft, Amazon, and Boeing. Now, if I blindfolded you and put you in this seat, take the blindfold off, I guarantee you would not think you're in an entry-level luxury vehicle at all. Seriously, when you look at this, Everything about it, it just screams flagship S-Class, or maybe even the, the E-Class. So right off the bat, you have these kind of aviation-inspired uh, air vents. You've got five of them. They have the brushed chrome look. And then you notice the color. This one right now, it's in purple. You can change uh, the colors, 64 different colors. Down below, the command center is a lot different. It looks really good it looks like an, uh, a piece of high-end stationery and overall the fit and finish of everything is seriously it's top-notch sure you're not gonna get some of the same materials top-notch materials as you would get in an s-class for instance you know real wood or leather but it kind of looks the same and it does the same job so it really fits the bill in behind the steering wheel that's where kind of all the magic's happening now just like the s-class no analog gauges, what you get, you get two screens. Standard are seven inch screens times two, or if you go into the premium package, which we'll talk about in a second, you get 10.25 inch screens times two. Now, when you look at the screens, they are so crisp. The graphics, the graphics card, or it's an NVIDIA graphics card, the same that uh, the gamers use for video games, so they gotta be good. What's powering those screens is new to Mercedes-Benz and it's called MBUX, Mercedes-Benz User Experience. It's a cloud-based system, it's got augmented reality, it's got artificial intelligence. I could really go on for about a half an hour just on this system alone, there's so much to it. First of all, there are multiple ways to access the screens. Number one, you can use your hand and touch screen now. Number two, you have this trackpad with haptic feedback. Number three, you have the capacitive touch uh, buttons on the steering wheel, one on the left, one on the right. The left one controls uh, behind the steering wheel and the right one controls the main one on the right side. So very intuitive. And the fourth way is you can use your voice now. So Mercedes-Benz started the whole uh, voice thing years and years ago and they've really brought it up to the next step now so what you do is you say hey mercedes how can i help you close the sunroof i'm closing the roller sun blind on the sliding sunroof and there she just does it so if you're familiar with some apple products it's the same as using siri except it's using Mercedes-Benz proprietary system and it's using the cloud. You can use this system for a variety of different things. The climate control, as you can see, um, you can use it for the sunroof, but you can ask a lot of different things like weather, you know, sports scores, you name it. You can ask it and, and directions, of course, and it uses a cloud-based data system. Now, if you're in an area that does not have data, for instance, if you're in a remote area, then 
you're going to be limited to what's just available within the car, which would be uh, anything that has to do with the vehicle. One criticism though is that Hey Mercedes can be a little too sensitive and can activate when you're not even trying. Mercedes Benz owners. How can I help you? It'd be nice if you can program a different word to trigger the feature. One solution though is you can turn it off and just use the voice button on the steering wheel for voice commands on demand. So when you're using the system, for some reason, I don't know, I, I just find it weird to touch a Mercedes screen, but it does work. But I, I love this trackpad, it has great feedback, and you have redundant buttons, so you don't have to go through menus all the time. There's a dedicated map button, so we're just gonna hit that, and there it goes, there's a radio button. But if you hit the home, now this is where the artificial intelligence comes in, is that it can recognize certain patterns of things that you do, let's say uh, places you go on a regular basis and it'll recommend things for you or the songs that you're listening to and you, you can scroll side to side first of all and then you can go up and down. Think of it as a three-tiered uh, system. We can scroll down and you have a trip, you have experience. Now one really cool thing is if you get the navigation system, it has a camera in behind the rear view mirror and it works in conjunction with that camera and the navigation system to give you an augmented reality uh, type of experience. So for example, if the navigation system is gonna tell you, you know, you're gonna be turning right in, you know, 400 feet or so, at about 300 feet, it will get an image, a live image of the video camera, place that on the screen and superimpose uh, street names, arrows of where to turn. Uh, so seriously, there should be never a reason to get lost anymore with this type of system. One thing I have to say though, it is, I find a little bit distracting on the right side. You, you're, you do have to take your eyes off the road a little bit. So I would like to see them be able to put that and overlay it on the screen in front of you. And I think that could be done probably sometime in the future. But otherwise, yeah, it's, it's great for a passenger though. It really is the, the next generation of navigation. Speaking of the screen behind the steering wheel, you can place the entire navigation there as well. So I'm seeing a full size map. Uh, I can, it's got a lot of information. I have the speed limit. I have what we're doing for speed, uh, time, temperature. Everything's all there, but if I don't want that look, I can change it. I can just have just a small display in the middle, but I can have different themes as well. I could have a sport theme or something even really more subdued. If you don't like a lot of bright lights at nighttime, you can go into this. It's a real, real clean, clean look. Now we mentioned the base model gets seven inch screens and most people will opt for the premium package when you buy your A-Class because that gives you all the real good stuff like the two larger screens. You get the automatic uh, trunk with a kick trunk thing. You get the keyless go system. All those things that make life a lot easier. You get all that. Plus you get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which works in conjunction with this system. If you're on Apple CarPlay, you can still use the voice command system of the MBUX. Comfort wise, there are a lot of adjustments on these power seats. Standard are heated seats. You can't get uh, cooled seats or ventilated seats on the A-Class, but what you can get is something called seat kinetics. And what that is, it's kind of like a massaging seat, except it's not really massaging. It's moving the, the seat back and, the, and your, your thigh area uh, every so, ever so slightly once in a while. And it's probably just, it's good to use to get the blood going. The rear seats have a surprising amount of leg and headroom for a compact car. There is a hump in the middle, so four would be fine, five would be uncomfortable. I didn't have a lot of luggage to put in the trunk, but I can see that it would hold a fair amount. There are split folding rear seats for extra cargo space if needed. We've had a lot of seat time in this A-Class. We've started off in Seattle, right downtown. We've taken that, we've driven through uh, the Mount Rainier Park, the Wenatchee Forest, all the way to Yakima, and then 
all the way back uh, going through canyon roads, rush hour traffic. So what's powering this A-Class? It's a two liter four cylinder turbo, puts out 188 horsepower and 221 foot pounds of torque. A nice thing about it is that that torque comes on really early at just 1600 RPM. And truthfully, when I first saw the specs, I'm like, man, you know, it doesn't seem like a lot of horsepower, 188. Uh, if you compare it to some other four cylinder turbos that Mercedes makes, like in the CLA, which has more power, this is a different engine though. And I'm telling you, you do not notice uh, the difference of horsepower at all. I think that might have to do a lot also with the transmission, which is a seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission. The A-Class is available in a front wheel drive only configuration or you can get the 4MATIC system that we have right now and I'm saying probably the majority of people, especially in Canada, will opt for the 4MATIC just because of inclement weather. One thing that's really noticeable of course is your dynamic switch here. So if we switch that you can go into sport mode. There's eco, comfort, sport, and individual, but sport really uh, gets the most performance. But on some of the roads that we were on, especially the nice twisty ones, it really felt a lot more dynamic to drive, and the power was right there. You really don't think that it's only 188 horsepower. Handling-wise, it has a very solid feel to it. I f find that it's, for some people, it might be a little bit on the soft side, uh, but I think they've actually tuned it pretty good for everyday drivers. We've had all sorts of conditions. Some of the roads we've been on haven't been uh, uh, the smoothest. There's a lot of, no potholes, not a lot, but uh, there's a lot of bumps and undulations and this sucks them up really good. Like I said, for most people, this will be fine. But if you want something that's a little bit uh, even more spirited, it might be a little soft. There you go, there's zero to about 62, roughly about seven seconds. It feels quicker though. I'm really, really liking this, this dual clutch transmission in this vehicle. It's very, very engaging. It's, it's very positive. So there's our look at the A-Class sedan. And I'm telling you, yeah, it's not an S-Class, but it is like a mini S-Class in a way. Just a minute, just a little bit. Well, you really get that real luxury premium experience. It has a look on the inside and out of something that's a lot more expensive. So how much is it? Well, at this time, there is no pricing yet, but I'm pretty sure this is gonna be priced under the CLA. Let's just say for a well-equipped one with a premium package that gives you uh, most of all the bells and whistles, with Formatic, it's gonna be sub $40,000 Canadian. So that's a lot of car for the money. Since the CLA came out, 70% of their buyers are brand new to the brand. And with this A-Class and the pricing and the features and all the things that you get with this vehicle, I think that trend is definitely going to continue. Now here's some exciting news. Unfortunately, just for Canada, we actually will get the A-Class hatchback, and that's coming at the end of 2018. What does that give you? Well, a hatch, it's a, it's a sportier look, plus uh, an enhanced engine compared to this one, so it bumps it up, probably around 40 horsepower. And if that's not enough for you though, there's been a little teaser, a new A35, so a real hopped up uh, performance version of this A-Class, and I can't wait to get my hands on that. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more everyday reviews, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.